And here you are, a heroin addict, calling this show saying, Michael, I agree with you, it can't happen to anyone. That's what you're saying, right? Yes, that's absolutely what I'm saying. i, I got to say something because it's a true story. I had a friend, Michael G., who's long dead, maybe 10 years. I, I lost contact with him many years ago. He was the sweetest guy I ever knew, great guy, funny. No one ever knew it. He was a heroin addict. He told, told me years later, he was a guy, had a regular job, he played tennis, and he was addicted to heroin. I said, how could you do that to yourself? I said, why do you do it? And he would make a joke about it. He said, I just want to prove that when I'm on heroin, I can beat someone in tennis anyway. You know, he made stuff like, he was an arrogant kind of guy, but I loved him to death because he was smart, and it didn't affect his life in a tremendously negative way. So how do you cope as a heroin addict? I don't understand what that means. You mean you're not destitute in the gutter? How does this work? Actually, I did have my time in the gutter. Uh, my dad kicked me out. He's actually the one who turned me on to you. <laughs> but he kicked me out, strong-willed man, to kicked me out when I was about 16 years old. I was actually on the streets of Las Vegas, homeless, uh, for about a year. And then, you know, it was, I was off and on, and I'd get clean, and I'd come back home. And then I was jail, and then I went to prison. And But now I am uh, sort of in the closet, I guess. <laughs> I go to my job. I work full-time. But um, yeah, on the side, I just. So how, how many time? How many times a day do you do you shoot up? I shoot up. Well, I pick up once a day, and I shoot up probably twice a day. And you don't get high anymore, right? This is maintenance. Um, it's mostly maintenance. But if I do more than I, you know, I, I can obviously get high if I wanted to do more. But normally, I just try to. Okay, if you were made, if you were an advisor to America's anti-drug program. How would you treat yourself? How would you have yourself stop? Or the bigger question, Lori, in reality is, do you really want to stop using heroin? I absolutely want to stop. And that's the real, the real problem with drug addiction is, bottom line, you cannot help anybody get clean unless they want to get clean. Well, that so I know. That's true for alcoholics or, or, or drugs. I've known that for 30 years. Most people like their addictions. They don't want to give them up. What about, here's a terrible thing to say. What if uh, drug dealers were given a death sentence? Do you think that would help at all, if dealing drugs was an automatic death penalty? Would it help me to stop or them to stop? Well, it would help you. You wouldn't get the drugs if they were dead. Uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> In other words, what if the drug supply dried up? Tell me what would happen to you. If what? If the drug supply was not there, you couldn't be a drug addict. Isn't that true? Correct. All right. Well, in Malaysia, I noticed when I went to Malaysia 20 years ago, there was a big sign on a billboard outside of the Kuala Lumpur airport. It said, "Drug deal." Uh, he said, "No, drugs are punishable by death in this country. If you're found with any drugs on you at all, it's a death sentence." Yep. That's yep. all. They tended to put out a pretty strong message at the airport. I think people would either leave, or they would just feel like they were invincible and could get well, away. I guess they could move to France. They could move to France or Holland and get the government shooting them up for them. The junkies who work for the government would be happy to shoot them up, and then the societies could continue to melt down. I'm sorry, you know, I, I don't, I don't know you. You're probably a nice person. You had medical needs of some kind, emotional needs rather, psychological needs, probably chemical imbalances, as they say. And I, I'm not denying any of that. And and you you started to use drugs and you found a relief for your terrible anxiety. Isn't that what happened? Actually, I don't know what it is. I don't have any medical needs. I'm smart. I you know I obviously I listen to your radio station. I'm pretty smart. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Very really funny. Sure what it is. Well, you know I'm not going to disagree with that. But Lori, why did you use drugs originally? I don't. I really can't answer that. I I don't know. Maybe somewhere deep down, my mom left when I was young. She was a drug addict. I don't know if it was in her. And oh, 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 oh! So you had a bad a bad start in life. Well, I come from another world. I think that if we had real tough law and order candidates and a real tough and law and order government, and they eradicated drugs by executing drug dealers, uh, point blank, if you're found to be a drug dealer, you're going to face the death penalty. Of course, it'll never happen. I think that'll be end of the be at the end of the drug epidemic. I think they're looking at it from the wrong side of things. It's never going to happen. Never. Never going to happen. It's too ingrained. There's too many billions of dollars being made in the rehabilitation treatment uh, area for this to ever happen. There's probably more money being made on treating drug addicts than there is on selling drugs to them. Do you know that right now? There are probably more organizations, more people living off drug rehabilitation than there are dealing drugs in this country. Absolutely. Nothing's going to change with that clown in the office. 
Well, I don't want to blame him for this. There's too many other problems we can lay right right in his doorstep. Lori, I'm sending you a book for Christmas. It's called Government Zero. I'm sure you'll enjoy it next to a fire one of these nights on your own. Right. Internet. Here. Harris, welcome to the Savage Nation. Line three. Harris, go ahead, please. You're on the Savage Nation. Hi, I love your show, but I disagree 100% with your attitude towards the Jews and what they're doing as relates to the... Uh, yeah, yes, yes. You quoted scripture. What you didn't quote was the first thing: if I'm not for myself, who is for me? The second thing you didn't quote was that if a person has limited resources, he has to deal with himself first before he goes to people further away. From no, 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 no. That's not what Rambam said. He said, "If I'm not for myself, who will be?" The rest of the statement was, "If I'm only for myself, who am I?" I, I know it very well because I studied it. You might quote scripture, I'll quote also, but that's not the point. You know and I know that... No, that is the point. That is the point, is that the, the organizations that are that are in the business doing what you say should be helping people outside of the Jewish community as well. If you have, first of all, they, they do. Secondly, Israel does. Thirdly, if you have limited resources, who do you take care of? That's the first issue. Well, what limited resources? They're rolling in money. What limited resources? Jews, why can't we have the, at the You're telling me that the Conference of Presidents of Major Jewish Organizations is suffering for money and income? Who? What? The Conference of Presidents of Major Jewish Organizations in New York is suffering for money? I can't speak to that. I don't know. I can only tell you everybody's got a limited resources. Everybody's pitching us to contribute to that. You're telling me the American Defamation League is suffering for money? I don't know the answer to that. Well, then, then why don't they just raise the awareness of what's going on with the Yazidi girls being raped and, and, and sold on a slave block? That wouldn't cost them too much. Uh, uh, that wouldn't cost too many shekels to do that. It's one spending the time and the resources to prevent, to protect Jews. The same thing could be happening. Well, protect Jews from who? Where? Protect Jews where? Where are Jews being taken off the street and raped? Show me. Taken off the street. They're talking about it now. Hamas and the organizations are... Oh, I know about Hamas. Don't get hysterical. We all know about that. But Israel's pretty strong and can defend itself. I see a defenseless community that no one's helping. And I say it's an obligation of the Jewish community first to defend them. At least raise awareness of it instead of being focused solely on Israel. That's my position. Oh, it's your position. I want you to know I disagree, and I love your show. I agree with almost everything else you say, but I think I can't understand why you're picking on this particular thing about you. Again, picking. You see, it's always picking on. It's picking on. No, it's trying to provoke, provoke the very, very powerful Jewish organizations to get outside of the limited areas of their concern. How, if, if you go to michaelsavage.com with your wife, your lovely wife who I heard in the background, uh, advising you. She's your advisor. She's the first lady of your household. Ask her to put on the computer michaelsavage.com. I beg you to go look at the tape of the girls. I don't know how they smuggled it out. Being separated from their mothers and fathers amongst these poor Yazidi children and being taken out by these, these men, these subhumans, worse than Hitler. And then they're raped repeatedly, sold on a slave block, then they shoot the fathers. If you watch that, you're going to see that where I'm coming from is a good place, not a bad place. I don't say it's a bad place. I really do, because I, I know what you're talking about. I know the tragedy of it. I'm not minimizing it. Believe me. I'm just resenting it when I'm seeing what about What about all of the rich people in Hollywood, all the Jewish people in Hollywood? And there's a large number of Jewish people in Hollywood. Why are they not concerned with this issue? Who says they're not? I don't know if they are. They're not. You're making a point. Well, well wait a minute. I haven't heard a word coming from, let's say, Spielberg, Katzenberg. Uh, Geffen, they're all Jewish. How come they haven't said one word about this? What? They have billions of dollars. Billions of dollars. Geffen lives on a 400-foot yacht. Why doesn't he spend 10 cents on public relations to talk about this travesty going on in the world? Or Spielberg, a brilliant filmmaker. Why doesn't he get up and give a speech once about this issue? What we're talking about. You're talking about organizations. These guys forget about these guys. It's a, they're an impossible group. They're, 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 it's embarrassment to call them Jewish. With all oh, so you're angry at them for their liberalism. Okay, well, you and I agree on that. I hear you. Where are you, calling, where are you calling from? Where do you live? What city? And, but, you're picking, but you're saying the Jewish organizations. I'm not saying... That yes, I, I wish they would do more. Where, what city are you in, my friend? I live in Oceanside, Long Island. Beautiful place. Beautiful place. I've never been there, but I heard a lot about it. In fact, I want to spend my next vacation in Oceanside. I'm sending you a copy of Government Zero, my good friend. As my father would say in his little antique story, I had a little sign. Don't go away, man. Just go away. Back in a minute.
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O. The first line of defense against radicalization is in the Muslim American community. People who we should be welcoming and working with. I worry greatly that the rhetoric coming from the Republicans, particularly Donald Trump, is sending a message to Muslims here in the United States and literally around the world that there is a clash of civilizations, that there is some kind of Western plot or even war against Islam. All right, you, you get the picture. Everything's upside down to Hillary Clinton and the leftist the scoundrels around her. She has it. Everything is backwards. There's a war of radical Islam against the world, including against moderate Muslims, and she's saying it's our fault for standing up to them, that we're conducting a war by defending ourselves. You hear? This is what I'm saying to you. How dumb, how stupid, how upside down she has it. How could anyone vote for this woman? How? It's all about money, period. There's enough grease coming down if she wins to the, all of the people who are feasting off Obama. Forget about it. That's all. You know, Marx wrote that when the last capitalist is hung, we'll hang him with the, the rope he manufactured. I never forgot that when I read it as an 18-year-old. That's all. It has a lot to do with what I just said to you. Money, 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 money. And that's why the West is imploding. It's the weakness of the West, and the weakness is this obsession with uh, wealth.